I'm sure you've already seen five videos about what's the difference between the 2021 and 2022 Formula One car. But I know for a fact that you haven't seen a video about what's actually different about the cars in terms of performance, so I've decided to make that video for you. My name is Blake and welcome to Break F1. I spent the last 10 years as a performance engineer at both Red Bull and Force India, and now I'm here on YouTube making Formula One data easy to understand. So if you're new to the channel, welcome. Today I'm going to use a little bit of Formula One telemetry and some basic vehicle dynamics principles to help to explain the performance differences between the current cars compared to last year's Formula One cars. The regulation changes for 2022 mark one of the biggest changes in the Formula One car since the introduction of the V6 turbo power unit in 2014. Now, there have been hundreds of videos on this, so I'm going to quickly gloss over all of this. So there are four main differences with the 2022 cars. Aerodynamically, the main goal was to reduce the amount of dirty air and allow the cars to follow more closely. This makes up most of the visual differences between this year and last year. The other very clear difference is we've gone from 13 to 18 inch wheels and tires. Honestly, I feel like this is just kind of a marketing thing to make it look a little bit more road car relevant. But from a performance point of view, I don't actually think there's that many changes. Now, the fuel must contain at least 10% ethanol in a push for more sustainable fuel types. In general, teams have lost some power with some teams siding as much as 20 horsepower or about 2%. One of the biggest things that you cannot see is the minimum weight of the cars. The minimum weight of the car has increased by 46 kilos from 752 to 798. This change was to allow for some safety features, bodywork changes, and the heavier wheels and tires. So those are the four main differences to keep in mind, but let's talk about how they've impacted the performance of the cars. So to compare 2021 to 2022, I'm going to focus mainly on Mercedes, Ferrari, and Red Bull is clearly they're the top three teams from this year and last year. In terms of tracks to compare, I've taken between Spain and Hungary and picked the dry qualifying sessions. So I'll use the fastest lap in qualifying from each of these teams to draw my conclusions. Just judging from the qualifying lap times alone, the 2022 cars have gone about 1.2 seconds slower per lap on average. Not all these three teams have lost the same amount of performance. In 2021, Red Bull and Mercedes were fairly matched in terms of qualifying pace, while Ferrari was about 0.6% off the pace. But in 2022, Ferrari is clearly the fastest outright in qualifying, with Red Bull about 0.3% off and the Mercedes a whopping 0.8% off. For the most part, Ferrari's lost the least performance, while Mercedes has clearly lost the most. Now, the thing which has changed for all the teams by roughly the same amount is the increased minimum weight. Now, depending on the circuit, this could be about 0.9 to 1.8 seconds of lap time loss. Now, remember, from the data that we've looked at so far in this part of the season, the cars are on average 1.2 seconds slower compared to last year. And it looks like the mass increase is probably making these cars about 1.5 seconds per lap slower as well. I mean, we could actually just stop the video here and say the cars are slower because they're heavier, but this isn't actually the entire picture. And I'll explain why. The next thing we can actually pretty directly compare from a performance point of view is the straight line speed difference between the 21 and 22 cars. The straight line speed of the car is simply a balancing act between how much aerodynamic drag the car is generating combined with how how much power the engine can produce to push the car along. Think about it this way. At maximum speed, when a Formula One car can't accelerate anymore, the engine is producing nearly 1,000 horsepower. And all that power is required just to match the amount of aerodynamic drag acting on the car. Now, as a general observation, all of the Mercedes-powered cars tend to be in the bottom half of the top speed, whereas the Red Bull specifically tends to always be in the upper third or so. And often, it's the fastest car on the track in a straight line by a fair margin. I think it's generally accepted that the Mercedes power unit took a big hit when they re-optimized the engine for the E10 fuel, it honestly kind of blows my mind that Mercedes, after outright dominating the engine development for most of the turbo hybrid era, got caught out by a fuel composition change. But anyway, now that we're talking about straight line speeds, one of the things I've noticed this year is that the lower downforce circuits tend to be even lower downforce, or at least lower drag than last year. For example, mid to high downforce circuits, the straight line speeds are very similar to 2021. Take, for example, Barcelona. Here's the 2021 speeds and lap times. This chart is simply a representation of the lap times and top speeds. Looking left to right, you can see that the range is about 310 to 330 kph. And the points closer to the bottom of this chart have a faster lap time. Then if we take a look at Barcelona 2022, the average speed is pretty similar, but everybody just kind of ended up in a smaller window. Now here's the interesting thing. On circuits with very long straights like Baku or Paul Ricard, which tend to be lower downforce, the teams tend to take off a bit more rear wing, or at least they have a more effective DRS system compared to last year. For example, here's Baku in 2021, where most of the teams ended up between 
between 325 and 335. 10 kilometer per hour top speed from the top to bottom of the field isn't particularly a large spread, but in 2022, a lot of teams took off a lot more wing with top speeds exceeding 340 kilometers an hour. Now, we really can't talk too much about drag level without discussing the downforce level of the cars, as these are coupled by the rear wing that the teams are using on their car. Now, it's outside of the scope of this video, but if that sounds interesting to you, leave me a comment and let me know. I'd love to make a video on how teams use simulations to pick out the best wing for a circuit. So we've had a huge error regulations change. People tend to generalize that your tire grip dictates your low speed performance and downforce sets your high speed performance, but actually aero grip can have a massive impact on low speed cornering performance and tire characteristics are very important for high speed grip. Now we're left with no other option but to look at some data and try to unpick what's happening. If you're new to these kind of graphs and plots, stick around, don't worry. I'll explain this as we go. And in the future, you're gonna have a lot better appreciation for what's actually going on in this data. So for our first comparison, we're gonna have a look at Barcelona because we visit this circuit in testing and during the season. So the Mercedes, Red Bull and Ferrari comparisons at this circuit all have a pretty similar trend. Now, I'm sure some of you may not be familiar with this chart, so I'm gonna go through it and try to make it as simple as possible. This is the telemetry comparison. We can see that we've got Max Verstappen from 2021 in blue, Max Verstappen from 2022 qualifying in red. Left to right is the distance on the circuit. Here's the start of the lap and here's the same point at the end of the lap. Here's turn one, two, here's turn nine, here's the final chicane and so on. The top chart is the car speed. Here's the throttle trace, here's the DRS trace, and here's the most interesting thing. Here is the lap time loss through the lap. You can see that 2021 is much faster. And if we look at the lap times, a 16.7 in 21 and a 19.0 in 22. In general, the 2022 car is just a little bit faster in a straight line with DRS on. You know, for some of these corners, they come out of the corners much slower, but they're making up a lot more speed. So looking at the lap time delta, the 2022 car is just slower everywhere. And honestly, now let's talk about the car mass again, because around Barcelona, plus 46 kilos on your car, your car should be about 1.5 seconds slower. But compared to last year, Max is going 2.3 seconds slower. So it's not all just the mass effect here. For example, last year, turn three here, and turn nine were basically flat. But in 2022, obviously there's a lift going through turn two, a lift going through turn three, and a reasonable lift through turn nine. The interesting thing is, I would say the cars have less downforce overall as their cornering speeds and high speeds are lower. But if we look at that in terms of how much lap time they're losing in these regions, as these places are both almost flat, you're not actually losing that much lap time from having less downforce in these places. So that's pretty interesting. I mean, look at turn one, which is a classic medium speed corner, losing easily three or four tenths here, but going through turn three, not really losing any time and going through turn nine. I mean, you can hardly see an inflection. Yes, he's probably losing half a tenth here, but it's not much compared to what he's losing in the medium and low speed corners through the rest of the lap. Now, another thing to point out is the braking distances in 2022 are a bit longer. Look at when they lift off here to when they get the apex of the corner. This is indicative of probably just less downforce and grip. Since the high speed corners don't really have a braking phase, you're not losing too much there. But overall, the weight is impacting the braking phase and the cornering phase quite a bit. And that is where we're losing a lot of our lap time around Barcelona. There could be so many other factors going on here. So let's have a look at another higher downforce circuit. Let's dig into the Hungaro ring. This was the last circuit that we went to before the summer break and the Mercs were on pole this year and last year. So I'll compare them this time. Now here's the telemetry. We've got Hamilton from 21 in blue and Russell from 22 in red. Again, I think we're seeing a lot of the same trends that we saw in Barcelona. The 2022 car is basically just slower everywhere. Braking distances are substantially longer and the high speed and medium speed cornering speeds are the most drastically different in terms of kilometers per hour. You look at the low speed corners, very similar low speed apexes, but still losing out a lot of time from the braking entry to the apex of the corner, not losing so much on the exits here though. Now, a lot of this is probably just overall car weight and a little bit of downforce and grip loss as well. But again, without a simulation package, it's actually pretty difficult to unpick what's tire grip and what's aerodynamic grip. So let's have a look at some lower downforce circuits and see what other conclusions we can draw. The Paul Ricard circuit of France is one of those circuits that shifted way towards lower downforce in 2022. So we've got Verstappen 21 in blue and Verstappen 22 in red. For the most part, you can see that the car is absolutely flying in a straight line down to the chicane through the flat out right hander here. Again, the medium speed corners are just quite a bit slower. We're looking at 10 to 15 kilometers an hour slower and they're losing out a lot of time on the brake. One of the things that makes this also a bit different is it looks like the optimum downforce level last year was different to this year, or it's just the Red Bull with a very slippy DRS in 2022. And the first thing I would say is look at the difference in the straight line speeds here. For the most part, the 2022 car is just slower everywhere. 
And another thing to pick out is just we're losing a lot of time on the brakes into the lower speed corners as well. So a little bit of downforce, a little bit of grip, and probably some quite different conditions in terms of wind. So for anybody wondering how do we make Formula One cars faster again? Well, put them on a diet. The 18 inch wheel entire package was something around 15 kilos in total. So if you went back to the 13s, you've already found three to four tenths of a second. Now I can't find anything that suggests that the 18 inch Pirellis have more grip than the 13s from last year, but the new tires do seem to allow the drivers to push for a lot of laps in a row when attacking so i think they're probably not a loss maybe it's worth losing three to four tenths for these bigger tires in general i would say that the cars have lost a bit of high speed cornering performance and that's probably down to losing a bit of downforce but most of the lap time that we're losing around the lap is in braking and apexes of the low and medium speed corners traction on the other hand looks pretty good compared to last year i mean don't shoot me but i'm pretty sure if you've been off the heavy hybrid systems and go to a synthetic fuel burning v10 we'd have a faster lighter and sustainable car but that's not where we're going if you want to talk about the 2026 engine regulations, FIA has just released what is actually happening. So I'll probably do a video on that soon. If you've enjoyed this video, I know it's something a little bit different, but I've left a couple of other videos and playlists here that I think you'll like, and I'll see you guys next time.